Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am The Sunny Machine. Today I want to talk to you about green screens. Green screens are awesome. Getting them set up right so that they look clean and natural and not kind of annoying where you're seeing a lot of dancing pixels, you got a lot of color bleed or things like, or things like this. So let's talk about green screen settings and getting your settings right from the beginning and what the most important things are so that your green screen looks good looks clean, looks professional, and it doesn't look distracting to your viewers. Let's just start here. I've got my green screen set up behind me. I have a pop-up green screen. If anybody is interested in um, this green screen, I'll link it below. It's a uh, better price than the Elgato green screen and basically exactly the same thing. If you're looking for a pop-up green screen, this one's pretty good. It's very, very big. It's big enough that you could fit yourself in front of it in a tight space like I'm doing here. So if you're interested in this green screen, I'll have a link in the description. What are the most important things when it comes to setting up your green screen? The two most important things are actually not the chroma key itself. It's actually your lighting and your camera settings. So let's just use the default chroma key settings to begin. So I'll turn those on. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad. It's because my lighting is right and my camera settings are good. You need to make sure that your lighting is good. If I start turning off lights, I'm going to start to look really dark and the green screen is not going to look so good. If this is your situation, you need more light on you. Now, thankfully, the lights on my green screen are actually green. Even with very low light in here, because I have a decent camera, the green is still coming through enough for the chroma key to activate properly. This is a good thing. But as you can see down here now, because I turned these lights off, I have two ring lights on, but it's not enough light. The lights for my green screen, I'm actually using those RGB flood lights, and I'm using them on the green color setting in order to fill in the green green screen. If I stick my hand back here, it becomes transparent because I'm using green light. If I switch these to a white light, I'll lose that effect as you can see, but you can start to see that the green screen itself is still not keying very well. And the reason is, is because it's creating kind of like a reflection of the white light on the green screen and it's making the screen less green. And that's not what you want. It's going to have a harder time chroma keying that out. And then you got to adjust the lights. Maybe even if I turn the brightness down, you can still see white light on a green screen is not always the greatest thing to do. But if I set this to green and turn it up, yeah, I mean, I kind of go transparent if I stick my arm in the green light, but the chroma key works really well. So using those RGB floodlights can be really beneficial for a green screen because you can actually make the screen green and reflect green light instead of white light, and that can help with your keying. And this is with just the default green screen settings. So if you get your lighting right and you get your camera settings right, you're going to have a really good experience with the green screen. So let's talk about chroma key settings that I'm going to suggest. So if we see here, this is what I've got to set to. And I think this is kind of like a sweet spot for chroma key settings. So if you're having trouble with your chroma key, you may want to try these settings. Similarity, 420. Smoothness, 30. Key color spill reduction is kind of up to you. If you could get away with zero use or one, then do that. If you need a little bit so that you pull some of the green coming in on the edges of your body, you know, vary it a little bit, but don't go too far up. If you go too far up, you can see I turn black and white. That's not what we want. The less key color spill reduction you can use, the better. And smoothness is similar. You don't want to go too low or too high because if you go too high, obviously you start to become transparent. If you go too low, you can kind of uh, get some dancing edges. You can get some like kind of like pixelated looking edges on your clothes. Um, so you might want to add just a little bit of smoothness. I suggest somewhere between 30 and 40 just to start. So these are good starter settings. You can obviously adjust the similarity up or down, but I wouldn't go too much. If you have to go down on similarity um, a lot, you're going to end up with problems like this. And if you go up, you're going to have problems like this. So 420 seems to be a pretty strong number to start with. If you can get it set looking good at similarity 420, 
you're going to have a pretty decent look with your green screen. Once you have these settings, what you need to do is mess with your lighting. You want to make yourself look good and you want to have a good experience with the lights in your eyes and lighting the screen. Now remember, if you're lighting your green screen with white light and the lights are pretty close to the screen, you're going to get hot spots and you're going to get weird reflections. You want the lights that are lighting you to help fill in light the green screen. And if you have any weird areas where it's kind of weak, you can use RGB floodlights to fill in the green. You can also use these to fill in just a white wall and actually use no green screen whatsoever. So if you have a plain background that would reflect green light very well, you could use these RGB floodlights as a stand-in green screen completely. So that's a really cool thing to know. So let's take a look at what happens if we have the wrong settings on our camera. If your exposure is too dark, you're going to end up with a very dark image on you, which is not what you want. But if your exposure is too high, you're going to have too bright of an image and your frame rate's going to suffer. So make sure your exposure is in that sweet spot. There's always a sweet spot with exposure. If your gain's too high, that's going to add a lot of grain and noise to the signal. And that's also going to affect how your green screen looks. Ideally, you want your gain to be as low as possible. If your gain needs to be up, that means you don't have enough lighting and you need more lights. There'll be a link below if you want to see good lights I recommend that won't break the budget. If your saturation is set wrong, the green's not going to come through very well on the chroma key. If your saturation is too high, you're going to look funny. If your white balance is off, it's going to throw off how you look, your skin tone, and it's going to change how the green screen appears on camera as well. But as you notice, changing these settings don't really affect the green screen settings all that much. And the reason is because these are really good settings for getting your green screen working. If you're having a lot of trouble with getting your green screen to look right, or you're having a lot of dancing edges, your settings are wrong on your chroma key. You should start over with my settings and just get your lighting right. It's really the trick. Good lighting. You can even just use green cloth. If you really want to, you could put a green cloth over your chair and get your chair to green screen as well, which is a really nice look. You want to make sure it's similar to whatever other green color you're using. But if it's close, close enough, it'll work. You can hide things in your room that aren't keying out properly with some green cloth. Just go to any store that sells fabric and ask them for a section of green cloth and try it and see how it goes. One of the things you'll notice with cloth is that these lines will show up if you kind of get wrinkles in them because of the shadows. Now, I don't think that's that big of a deal. I think having the cloth can be better than not having the cloth most of the time. But I just want you to be aware that if you're seeing this kind of stuff, you know, you just have to kind of straighten out the cloth and make it look nice. So green screen, are you doing it wrong? Let me know in the comments if this video helped you out. If you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll try to answer you. If you have any suggestions on future videos you'd like to see, let me know. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you want more like this. This video is supported by people on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash infinitequality or just visit our website, infinitequality.live. You can join our community discord there, which is free to join, and you can have access to our discussions around streaming and content creators. If you ever need help with anything, we've got a good community over there of people that are willing to chat with you about pretty much anything content creator related and all the stuff that's been going on. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.